Welcome to Ask a Fear Online today here with myself, Chef Thomas. We have a fantastic topic, superfoods. We hear this all the time now uh, in the radio, on the Food Network. We read books about it, magazine articles, superfoods here, superfoods there. What is it? Well, it's definitely not my muscles because I'm not well trained. But um, as more you eat these superfoods, it's better for your health. So what we're doing today is I picked 10 superfoods, actually yeah, 10 superfoods I want to introduce to you. There is a massive amount of foods out there that are actually just as super as the ones I'm going to tell you today. I'm going to teach you today also how to spot this uh, superfood. So then after a while you're going to be like, hey, wait a minute, you know, I look at the nutritional facts, I look at how many calories it has, this could be considered a superfood. Nevertheless, about how super your food is, too much of anything good is bad for you. So we still want to make sure that we understand that a balanced diet and uh, a knowledge about portion size is definitely always going to stay in the foreground of your research on superfoods. I can eat the most healthiest food day in, day out, way too much and still gain weight and it still could be bad for me. So one more time for all of you, make sure that you understand Balanced diet is the key um, and also portion size is tremendously important. And we're going to do a class on that as well. And there's also a lot of ma reading material out there about the correct portion size. I can tell you if you go to a restaurant and you take food home, those portion sizes are obviously too large. I always tell my students to have no more than 16 ounces of food on a plate. So. If you think your starch, your vegetable, your protein, your sauce, your garnish, it's not a lot to play around with. So for maybe lunch portion, it has like maybe four, three, four ounces of protein. For a dinner portion, maybe about seven to ten. Uh, I've been in restaurants, and I'm sure you have been too, where portion sizes start anywhere between 32 or 24 and 32 ounces, and you bring tons of stuff home. But let's focus on our superfoods today, okay? So I have in front of me a ton of different... Uh, uh, items here. We're going to go through all these different ingredients I brought in here. And uh, the definition of a superfood is actually that it has to function multi, as a multitasker. So we're talking about maybe a little bit of weight loss, maybe a little bit of health benefits, maybe a little bit of disease fighting. What is key though again is the balance and the portion size of all these uh, products. No excess calories is something we are always looking for. So a vegetable which has, as I call it, negative calories, meaning the product actually takes more energy to burn in my body than it actually brings into my body, that would be a negative calorie. A cucumber and most of your green vegetables are considered negative um, calories. Uh, cucumbers are very, very good snack um, uh, foods. So, you know, like the mini, the baby, uh, the baby uh, cucumbers they have right now, the seedless cucumbers are very well received also for kids, which is very important to teach them also to snack healthier. And it's definitely one of my favorite uh, superfoods, a cucumber. Now, how do I find these new products? Um, after this class, I hope you have enough confidence and knowledge to actually go out into your grocery stores or farmer's markets and, uh, or even organic markets and actually really look at the products and of the nutrition values. Uh, you need to learn about your products. There's nothing more important for a chef's knowledge than uh, constant research. We have right now in Chicago the National Restaurant Association uh, show going on where there's a lot of products, a lot of new equipment and so forth. So these are the things you want to get yourself acquainted with and go to uh, for the sheer fact of research. So you go into the grocery store next time, please look for a product you have never worked with. Pick something up you have never tasted. Take that home. What's it going to cost? Like $3, $4 to, to try? Go to a farmer's market and ask how this product is produced. Talk with the farmers about their growing. Talk with the farmers about um, um, you know, how maybe uh, a nectar is made or, or a, a, a jam is made. You know, learn these things because it's very important to decipher what is good for you and what is bad. In general terms, I try to stay away from any processed food. It is not easy. It is not easy and I'm not going to tell you you have to get rid of all your products right now and only buy organic and cook everything fresh. It is very hard, especially with kids, to have um, less and less processed food. But 
if you include your kids in daily cooking chores again, like we did years and years ago, make this fun, it actually works quite well. Um, kids are very re resilient to new ideas, obviously, so they still like the fast food and so forth. Just try to stay away from this stuff. Uh, even a freshly cut salad at a fast food chain is not as healthy as something you make at home with your child, maybe from the farmer's market or from your own garden. And we have also classes about how to do home gardening, so check all these things out. It's very important to learn these things. The second part after researching these superfoods or finding these superfoods is um, also to read magazines, to check out what's on Food Network, and to research online on what is new and exciting. Uh, quinoa is one of these things came years ago. This grain is around for hundreds of years, and it has just now, again, found its spot and, and highlight on some of the plates in uh, some of the nicest restaurants. Uh, beans. Everybody knows beans. And uh, we haven't really thought of beans for a long time, but they also are a superfood, and they also need a place in our diet. Good. Now let's go a little bit to the cooking part. Uh, we teach you all the classic cooking methods, and they are to apply it to some of these foods. We cannot eat everything raw. Well, maybe I should rephrase that. Technically, you can uh, eat everything raw, but it's maybe not quite the best idea. Uh, I'm not quite uh, consi considered a, a believer in the raw diet. Uh, or paleo diet is very hard to follow as well. So there's so many different diets out there. So let's go to the cooking part, OK? Um, short cooking, or as I call it, a la minute in the restaurant business. We call it a la minute because it goes in a minute it is done. Something like grilling, something like sauteing. Um, we're trying to minimize the time product is considered uh, penetrated by heat. Heat and water destroys vitamins and minerals and um, uh, all other micro and uh, micronutrients, which is important to keep for the superfood to actually work in your body. So I can take broccoli, which is also a superfood, and totally overcook it to mush, and it's not going to have any benefits for me anymore. Now, broccoli I can eat raw in a salad. I can also steam it for a couple seconds to make it nice and bright, and to also make it more al dente, maybe uh, for seniors to eat a little bit easier. So cooking techniques, short high heat, um, n avoid water, uh, don't boil anything too long, uh, rather blanch and steam. All right, so this was the cooking techniques, and I told you about how to find this. Uh, now let's go a little bit uh, through which kind of superfoods I have here. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is eggs. So eggs, everybody knows, we have a picture up. I didn't bring any because I'm a klutz and I always would break them. Um, and they don't let the uh, hot food chef play with eggs. It's a baking pastry thing, right? So her eggs are high, uh, is a high, has a high quality protein. These high quality proteins actually are considered to carry over so much calories during the day that if you eat maybe one or two eggs in the morning, let's say maybe over easy, like our assignment is, um, or maybe poached, which would be a technique which you should definitely learn and practice a lot. Uh, you'd eat eggs in the morning, that protein actually is going to carry you over longer than anything you can eat protein-wise. So I come from Europe. Eggs and ham is like something which is very common. I'm pretty sure here in America too. We kind of completely went away from it and stuff our body now with cereal, which is grains. And this is not something you should actually want to eat in the morning um, because it is actually not good for you. So keep it with the high profile proteins like eggs, um, maybe oats, or maybe something more whole grain. The next uh, item I actually brought in, and this is uh, yogurt. And uh, when we talk about yogurt, the um, one fact about yogurt which is very important is, or if any dairy product is, that we want to make sure we go low fat, uh, plain, not sugared, no corn syrup, uh, don't get anything colored. Uh, just because it looks purple and yellow does not necessarily mean it's healthy for you. Uh, for kids, it's very important that we stay away from all this sugared and uh, plastified uh, yogurt stuff. We need to make sure it's organic. We need to make sure it is low fat uh, with as little 
stuff in there as possible. I almost said a different word, I'm sorry. So uh, yogurt, high calcium, low fat, fantastic. The whole craze about Greek yogurt, great. Jump on the bandwagon, really makes no difference if it's Greek yogurt or any other yogurt as long as low fat, organic, uh, and calcium high. There is yogurts that are fortified with vitamin D just like our milk. Perfectly fine. Vitamin D is something we produce for our skin through sunlight. So if you sit in the office all day, probably a good idea to throw in one of those yogurts uh, as a snack. 100 calorie packaged food in general, if it's yogurt or anything else, is a very good way to calculate your intake. A, a, a normal size uh, adult, and I say this now with a big broad, uh, with a very big uh, bandwidth here, can anywhere have between 1,400 calories and probably 2,400 calories, depending on how much you move. So if I know how much I eat about in calories, that is not a bad thing to keep in mind. But again, balance and portion size, if I watch that, I don't have to count nothing. No points, no calories, because it's going to come naturally. Listen, if you feel full, stop eating. It's that easy, right? Drink a glass of water before you eat, then you're going to start weaning you off from eating way too much too. Uh, the next product which goes really well with the yogurt is berries. Berries like strawberries, raspberries, high in vitamin Z, fantastic sources of minerals. We don't cook them. Please try to get them as fresh as possible. Uh, if you get them freeze, dry, freeze frozen, make sure you get the highest quality. But other than that, I would say grow them yourself, can them, keep them in the winter, and uh, make them as natural as possible. Um, Berries not necessarily are sweet, they actually are high in acidity. So I do understand when people use some, maybe some sweetener for their um, yogurt. And I have actually one sweetener with me. This is uh, actually agave nectar here, which is a fantastic um, organic product to sweeten your products. Um, raw brown sugar would be just as good. Agave nectar is a little bit healthier. Uh, it's less processed, so that works too. Honey uh, would also be very nice. Um, some of our vegan um, clients or vegan students would probably rather go to the agave nectar than to the uh, honey. All right. Next one, I can also throw that in my yogurt, is nuts. I'm going nuts over nuts. This is my favorite snack food, and it's actually a very dangerous super food for you because nuts are extremely high on fats. So we have tons of these um, antioxidants, which is good for your heart. Um, and we have these um, tons of different uh, nuts we can eat. Uh, we have um, peanuts, we have pistachios, uh, hazelnuts, walnuts, pecans. I'm running out of names. Uh, so all these cashews, cashews are very good. Um, so these nuts have all their own properties, obviously, the nutrition values. But don't forget one thing is true for all nuts, they're high in fat. Toasting nuts is okay, it does not take a whole lot of fat out of them. Uh, grinding nuts up for using them as a flour, like almond, almond flour or uh, hazelnut flour for baking, especially if you're gluten-free, is a fantastic way to stay off, off gluten. Don't forget that the high fat content definitely plays a big role on how superfood this superfood is um, because too much of that can definitely hurt you in the long run. Uh, this one is considered to be fantastic for snacks if it's weighed out in 100 calorie portions so you have a little bit more of an idea how much you eat. Um, I measured out these pistachios here in this container. This would be equivalent to about 125 calories. So this is not a lot of nuts. This is probably going to be going next to my computer in a couple minutes, and I'm going to snack on that for the rest uh, of the day. So that's 125 calories right there. But definitely good for my heart. Another one we have, um, and uh, I brought a picture in, is beans. Uh, beans, especially now in the summertime, fantastic for salads, for barbecuing. Um, now, I know also America is very well known for the baked beans with bacon and honey and sugar and, you know, brown sugar. Okay, so let's take a step back here. I'm taking all these products and throw them in a big pot and boil these and cook these beans. Now, these healthy benefits of these beans is gone. It's just gone. It's vanished because now I'm just adding 100,000 calories with sugar. I'm adding some... Um, 
I'm adding some bacon, which is high in fat. So we want to stay away from uh, adding too much. So a bean salad could be just um, you know, your, your, your beans washed, drained, mixed with some other vegetables, maybe tomatoes, onions, uh, some cilantro. So keep it light, maybe a little bit vinegar, a dash of mustard, maybe a little bit of sugar or agave nectar or honey to sweeten it up. But try to stay away from all this other stuff and too much of the barbecued baked beans is definitely not a good idea. Uh, beans are high in omega-3. They are considered the substitute for your meat protein. So if you're starting to wean off maybe a little bit from the meat, beans are going to give you that feeling, that feeling, feeling of the meat protein. High on soluble fiber, and uh, the daily recommendation is actually about three cups a week of um, these beans. So three cups a week. I'm pretty sure not everybody knew that and eats that much. All right. I have something fantastic for you right now. I actually brought in a huge, real salmon. So let me move this over here so you can see it. Salmon is a fantastic fish. And uh, this fish is, uh, mm, smells like roses. No, it actually smells a little bit like seawater and cucumbers, and that's about what it's supposed to be. So a salmon is uh, high on omega-3s, very low on calories, and we should have fish or seafood about two times a week, which would be very easy for me. I eat like sushi every other day. So fish in any kind of form, but again, we're trying to apply short cooking methods. This would be perfect now for barbecue season, uh, for grilling, uh, maybe a quick saute. Uh, I'm going to show you at the end of the class a little dish on how uh, the salmon is going to be uh, a fantastic uh, item on your plate. So sauteing, grilling works. Um, you can also poach the, the salmon. Uh, salmon is not particularly good for poaching. Maybe a different fish, like a flat fish, uh, round, um, turn around in like pop poppyettes um, and little, little rolls. So um, a little bit about fresh fish here quickly. Eyes need to be clear. Gills need to be red. If I touch it, the meat should spring back should not smell like fish. It smells like fish. It's probably not good anymore. So Seth and I, we're still smelling uh, nothing in here. So this fish is perfectly fine and fresh. Um, this is a big one, probably about 12 pounds. So uh, that feeds a large family. You probably get out about uh, 12, 24 fillets out of this thing. So um, good. Let's go to our next contender as superfood. Da -da 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 -da. We have Quinoa, dun, dun, dun. My, favorite, um, my favorite mother grain, quinoa, comes in different colors. Uh, there's tricolor quinoa, um, this is red quinoa, and uh, as you can see, it kind of pops open, has a little germ coming out, and uh, you cook it like pilaf style, just like rice. You can put onions in uh, whatever, garlic, works all, maybe if you want a little bit of coconut fat to get a little bit more um, oomph in there. It's a fantastic rain, easy to work with, cooks by itself pretty much, just have to put the pot on with the water. And we have a question. What's the difference between farmed or wild salmon? Oh, okay, so farmed and wild salmon. Well, it depends really on which area you come from. I would probably go for the wild salmon uh, more than for the farmed one. Farmed one is always a question if and what they actually fed that fish. Um, some of the fish um, are overfished and uh, they were endangered for a while. Chilean sea bass was one of them. So they started farm raising them, which means there's different techniques. Some they get farmed, uh, they get raised at a farm and let out in the, in the wild. Some are actually uh, raised, born raised, and then manufactured in the same area. Uh, the obviously wild caught ones are literally, there's a hunting season just like for anything else wild. Uh, they can hunt for this for a while, like coast salmon or king salmon. There's seasons out there. Then you get them for a particular time frame, and then they're gone. Um, for restaurants, that is kind of like where seasonal cooking comes in. So the difference on the meats, um, usually wild-caught salmon is a little bit darker. Actually, not a little bit. It's a lot more darker, like a dark brick red. Uh, the um, farm-raised ones are a little bit lighter, like a pink flesh almost. Uh, other than that, they're completely the same. Size maybe matters a little bit at that point. They're maybe a little bit easier to size because of the um, process they go through. 
Uh, I hope that answers your question on what the difference is between the wild and the farm-raised salmon, or actually any kind of fish. All right, let's go back to our uh, quinoa. So quinoa, uh, about eight, gram, eight, eight grams, sorry, eight grams, or one cup, um, sorry, eight grams of quinoa. No, let me rephrase this. One cup of quinoa has about eight grams of protein. So a really good source of protein as well. So if you mix that with your breakfast eggs, you've got to be good for the whole day. Uh, has a lot of vitamin E, zinc, and iron. So that grain has actually a lot of properties our green vegetables have. So if you have a kid which doesn't like green vegetables, you might want to try to uh, sell them the quinoa. My daughter, she's seven years old, she says it tastes like spaghetti. Don't ask me. Okay, so that's your quinoa. Uh, broccoli is my uh, next superfood. I have a little bit of broccoli here. We have also um, worked with broccoli many, many times. This is already steamed, very, very quickly steamed. You can see it on that beautiful color. Oh, we have a picture, sorry. Uh, that actually is beautiful too. That is your superfood. You can actually eat raw. You can steam it. You can put it in stir fry. You don't even have to worry about if it's cooked all the way through. It's a fantastic vegetable. Broccoli has a lot of vitamin A, C, and K. K actually, vitamin K is known as carotene. Everybody thinks it's only in carrots and in oranges, like an orange uh, vegetable. Not true. Broccoli is actually one of the highest holder of vitamin K. Very important, some of these vitamins are water soluble and some are fat soluble. Cooking this too much or boiling it, it's going to get rid of a lot of uh, those vitamins. So again, short steaming or eating raw is best. Don't forget to wash it though. Sweet potato is another one. And the sweet potato is actually something I did not really knew about until I came to America. We don't really use this too much in, uh, in, in Austria and Europe. So sweet potato is full of vitamin A, C, calcium, and potassium. Potassium is known to be in bananas uh, mainly. And just because now I said it, if you actually really taste the cooked uh, sweet potato, doesn't it have kind of the texture of a banana? Anyways, I'll leave you with this. You can uh, try this at home. So a sweet potato, uh, you can slice open, deep fry, eh, you know, it's not that healthy, bake it. Now, now it's just hard for you to stay away from that ton of butter and that brown sugar, right? Because that's how we know here to eat the sweet potatoes. So find other recipes. Find maybe a terrine, find a souffle, uh, which is maybe a little bit more healthier. Or substitute some of the uh, ingredients, you know. I could probably make a really good uh, baked sweet potato uh, casserole with, you know, a little bit of agave nectar or maybe um, at least uh, unrefined sugar. Uh, there's coconut sugar too. I just found that yesterday is really nice and tastes really, really good. So there's different techniques you can employ to some of your family favorites for turkey fest, right? Um, which may be a little bit healthier. Don't put any marshmallows on top, okay? That will kind of kill the whole superfood thing. Marshmallows are not a superfood. My daughter always thinks they are. They're not. All right. Now, last but not least, I have um, some uh, kiwi here. And uh, kiwis are fantastic. I'm going to cut this one open here. Kiwi has a fantastic smell. It's fresh. Um, kiwis have a lot of uh, vitamin C. Actually, one kiwi is, uh, research says that one kiwi gives you the whole vitamin C for a whole day. For a grown-up, whole day. One kiwi. Um, I made it um, a... a, a um, Matter of fact, I'm, I made this kind of a snack for, for my kids, so I'm peeling it, I cut it and slice it and give it to her for school for, for, for snacks. Uh, also very high on potassium and fiber, who would have thought, right? So now let me show you a little bit how we can make this very quickly into something really fun. So I'm going to move this over here to the side. And uh, let's start with our yogurt. So here I have some yogurt. And uh, so this is plain yogurt. I have a couple nuts here. nuts, right? Plain, simple yogurt. And then uh, if you want to have it a little bit sweeter, I'll put a little bit of agave syrup on there. All right, breakfast. How easy was this, right? Okay, so how about lunch? So we have a nice plate here. And uh, we said, what did we say? Uh, some quinoa, right? Mm, 
Now, quinoa cooks like rice, so I made way too much. I think I put like a cup of quinoa in there and it tripled. So keep this in mind, read the labels well. So we have some broccoli here. Look at that. And I have made some salmon at home. I just sauteed that salmon up very quickly. Now let's put some agave syrup on it. No, let's not do that. That would be not cool. All right, well, this will be uh, very quickly uh, lunch for you with all superfoods. Now you can obviously put some sauce on there or some stock to make it not so dry looking because it did dry a little bit out, obviously. And um, that would be lunch. Now for a snack, I told you I would, um, I would do a kiwi. And this is pretty much how I'm going to leave you today with uh, me snacking on my kiwi. If there's any more questions, you can obviously always email us and uh, find some more superfoods. And I wish you a wonderful summer, and I'll see you soon. Thank you. Mmm.